Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome to our channel. Take a look around. Plenty of content for you to binge. We've been going at it for almost two years now. Next month it'll be two years. And if you love old movies, you've landed in the right spot because we watch them together from start to finish on this channel. Let's start looking at the wall of my living room decorated like this because old movies are important for the past 32 years. Okay, so the way that we suggest you watch the movie and me together is at the same time and like this. So there are options of ways to accomplish this. What I'm showing you is the coolest way. It's always the ideal and I'll take you through the steps to do that. But if you can't set it up like that, you always no fail have the ability to watch the movie itself on your phone. There's always just the links that you need to be able to push play on the movie. The only videos that I upload onto this channel as watch-alongs is because I have found access to the film and if I can find it, you can find it. I'll take you through where that's available in a second. But to set up the playback to be one screen, you can do two tabs. This video of me in one tab, the movie in another, they're going to lock side by side. Pull the movie to take up more of your screen. Then take an HDMI cable from your device that you've set that up on and plug it into your biggest screen TV. One screen, your biggest screen. If you want to set it up the way that I showed you, it is the play on TV button, this video of me, picture in picture, that shrinks me, floats me, you move me into a corner of the full screen movie. We always hope that you're able to watch it like that. That is the intended viewing experience for our channel. We're not going to lose the channel by including the copyrighted audio visual on screen, but you can still have that viewing experience for yourself. So where I give you information about where you can access your copy of the film to watch with me is over on my sister Pinterest page. I create a board for every movie that we watch. I fill that board with pictures just from the film. You guys can see I love film photography. I've decorated my home with it. And the first or second thing you're going to see in the board is giving you information to push play on your copy of the movie with me. Okay, that's how we do what we do and where we have everything that we have. So this movie, gosh guys, I have avoided watching this movie for a long time. I think I've seen bits and pieces of it way, way, way back in the day, probably 30 years ago. And you know, it was just, you know what I think it is. And they, it maybe has dated, right? Because there's just a lot more intense challenges in life as far as substance is concerned in this day and age, right? So like something on this substance being so intense is maybe a little bit of a get real type of thing, but you know, there's also just not to discredit that this substance in itself can be enough to cause a lot of problems in anybody's life. Um, and so kind of though, as this movie was done and it was being screened to audiences, they were laughing. And exactly for that reason, like, Okay, he's totally overacting, but a really big part of why that was is they didn't have Miklos Roxas soundtrack score, score, which is the music inside of a movie, um, completed and attached to it yet. So they said they went ahead, got his score done, got that attached to the movie, previewed it. It was fine. I did not know this about this movie. I knew Ray Milan won Best Actor for it. I thought that was it. It won the Best Picture. It won Best Director for Billy Wilder. And I think it won the Best Screenplay. It won four Oscars. It's also one of only three movies in history that has won the highest honor at the Cannes Film Festival along with the Best Picture Oscar. Marty. How did I know that? Marty won the Best... Um, picture Oscar also when it came out. I, I mean, it makes you think like, okay, I guess we could watch Marty too. It's a good movie. I didn't know it was the best picture. <laughs> it's, it's okay. We're not talking about Marty, <laughs> but it's one of only three. There's some other movie and I feel like it was much more current day 
that has done that at the Cannes Film Festival. This movie last weekend was also at the very first Cannes Film Festival. So, um, yeah. Evidently, now this is an interesting thing. I tried to get the details of this and you know, I'm not gonna be able to get it exactly correct. Billy Wilder, we have several of his movies on the channel now. I think maybe have I even started a Billy Wilder playlist, but probably like maybe right before this movie, Billy Wilder has just done Double Indemnity. I feel like the guy that he was working on the screenplay with for that movie, for sure, let's keep it tied to that movie. They were saying this guy that was his co-writing, whatever, was an alcoholic and was a recovering alcoholic, but due to the tension of working with Billy Wilder, falls off of the wagon. And so Billy Wilder makes the movie Lost Weekend to try and understand this writing partner for himself. I think that the writing partner also is helping him on this film. And so maybe it was also or while they were making this film that he falls off of the wagon, whatever, right? But like that was a part of what is going on, Billy Wilder's inspiration for making the film. Um, a technique that they said was kind of one of the first of its kind for making this movie was they were shooting it in LA, but I guess it's based in New York. And so Wilder for about a week or so takes the crew out to New York to just get some actual location footage. And they, Malam comes out there too, because he's walking the streets. They were hiding the cameras so that they're catching film footage of him walking as a pedestrian among the crowds in New York. And the people that were the pedestrians are real pedestrians because they didn't see a camera to know that they were getting filmed for a movie. <laughs> so they were saying like, that was, a, it's a very unique, I, I don't know if it'll even create some like unique angles of seeing him, but definitely it is like legit. I guess like he probably couldn't even see himself being filmed. Um, they said something about there's some interesting little electrical instrument that is being used one of the first times in film that will be when he's all drunk. And it, it's gonna be some type of an electronic sound, which we know back this far in film, they're not using a whole lot of electronic instruments. It's, you know, symphonies and stuff. So, because we got that tidbit from the birds. That was definitely one of the first of its kind of a um, synthesizer that was used in that movie. And then this was just really cool. I saw a documentary. I feel like Turner Classic was the one interviewing her. Jane Wyman being interviewed. She's giving the interview. She, it, I don't know. I feel like it must have been in the 90s. She looked great. And she was just discussing her career. I think she was primarily contracted with Warner. And the Queen of the Bees is what she was known as. And this was where, I, I know that I've told you guys about watching this documentary before because it was the first time that I'm getting this explanation of, especially Warner Brothers, just having an intention of making B-level movies. It was hilarious in The Road to Utopia. Um, Bob Hope talks shit about <laughs> Bing Crosby is gonna set the movie down to be a B movie. Bing Crosby hits the screen and he's like, oh, I thought this was gonna be an A movie. <laughs> so, but like, it seemed that Warner Brothers was just proud of it, repping for it, that they knew they were putting out content that they only expected to be classified as B. And how, therefore, Jane Wyman was the queen of the Bs. And she was just sitting there explaining her career primarily consisted of these B-level movies. So we have a watch along of her. I would say it's probably the first movie that I felt like really strongly the need to put up on the channel of her. It's probably maybe the only movie that we have of her. No, we have The Yearling too. But it is Johnny Belinda. She wins Best Actress for that. So she could act. Like she had a lot of ability to act. And I love her in The Yearling, too. Like, she is a corona in that movie, but yet you even, like, feel for her. So, I mean, she had these abilities to do important work, but primarily, I mean, she's pro it's probably The Yearling 
is just an effing good family movie. Stands the test of time. She wins Best Actress Oscar for Johnny Belinda, and they loved her speech. She gets up on stage and she says, I won this movie or this Oscar for keeping my mouth shut throughout the movie. I'm going to do the same thing right now. She was off the stage. And then it's this. Are probably, and then I feel like, and I've never really seen this one in depth, but like Magnificent Obsession or something with Rock Hudson. I don't much care for Rock Hudson, guys. We probably aren't going to have much of his titles on the channel. Um, but I guess like that performed really well in the box office for her when it came out. And, but that would probably be it in her career. Yet she's probably got 50 movies to her name. Um, so there's just this little package of movies let me say that of hers that are kind of bundled together that i have we all have access to maybe you guys have seen this but one day and so you know i tell you guys i work in my office i have my little laptop set up with me all day long so i'm watching movies all day long and one day i knew i was just going to give a little bit of overtime and i had been watching the yearling and then there you know it's just an autoplay of movies and so the next movie came up i had no idea i wasn't really paying attention there's this really just music literally like going that fast and it, it's letting you know you're about to start watching a B movie and she, it was this movie of her three guys named Mike and it was actually a pretty cute movie but it was de a definite B movie experience and she was the queen of those though so she was explaining in this documentary how from time to time in these B-movies, she could give just a quick split second demonstration of her ability to have some dramatic ability to act. And I guess it was something that she had done recently that Billy Wilder saw. Now, actually though, they were saying they had quite a few actresses in mind before her. It was Olivia de Havilland with Sue and her movie studio. So she wasn't able to be doing any movies. Um, they said Catherine Hepburn had been suggested and maybe even Jean Arthur but so then they got around to Jane Wyman but she said that she was told by Wilder that like he had seen like a 10 second just a little facial expression that she had done in some film and he thought you know she might be able to do this and so she occasionally it was like these the yearling this Johnny Belinda got these opportunities to do more like serious work um okay so haven't I, like, did I say this several minutes ago? I know I have seen bits and pieces of this movie 30 years ago. Let's consider this a first time watch. I doubt that very much of any of this movie is going to feel familiar to me. Um, and th though I might have seen bits and pieces of it, let's don't say that like I sat and watched the whole thing from start to finish. So um, I am very enticed to see this now, given that it's also the best freaking picture best director i had no idea it was regarded this well at the time read a little biography on milan's just now Th this is the movie in his career that he regarded as like the only good movie that he ever made and he was very nervous to do this i guess like they said he was do look i feel like he was on his way back from an mc job in peru what the f you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, so he was not necessarily feeling satisfied with his career in Hollywood, and he was taking MC jobs in Peru. So he's on his way back from that, and he's given this script. And I feel like it is based on a book, so maybe he was given the book to read first, but they were like, read it, study it, because you're going to play it. And he just felt like he didn't know how to act, really. He felt like up to this point, he had never had to really do that. He was saying he was um, excited to work again with Billy Wilder because he had worked with him previously, and I guess the screenplay guy, um, on Major and the Minor. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's... Because I was like, I really felt the need to look up Milan because I was like, wait, I need to know too. I don't know enough of his catalog, but it's like, what like this did he have going on before this? Nothing. So, you know, good for him to show up and, you know, get that Oscar. Same thing for Jane Wyman for Johnny Belinda. Definitely check that one out on the channel here, guys. All right, let me get it queued up. Let's watch it. All right, I just wanted to point out, okay, is that kind of focus? Uh, Miklos Roxa, like why I just said him by name. He's the guy that does the score for Ben-Hur. We discussed, like, that's one of the longest scores in his, it was the longest score in history up to that point. He's just really important, right? Like, as the score guy. 
in history. And just to let you know too, I pressed play a second ago just to make sure it would start, get it queued up. From right away when it starts out, it's sounding like double indemnity. Did he do the score for that too? Let's see. Well, I don't, we're not gonna see by looking at this, but listen to how it sounds. So here we go, playing. I'm gonna make sure I'm at zero. In three, two, one. Oh, so Jane Wyman comes in above the um, title Paramount. She got lent out for this movie, too. Because she was with Warner. What a basic background, huh? Just some cloth. Okay. Billy Wilder does write the screenplay and direct it. There's me close. They said the score that they had to screen it was some light, upbeat, jazz stuff. Edith Head, wow. Oh, okay. Is it also, they were given permission to shoot inside of the psych ward of Bellevue Hospital in New York and no other movie was allowed to do it after that. And that Milan to get ready for the role went and spent tried to spend the night. He got so disturbed he left at three o'clock. He just walked out three o'clock in the morning. They said he was really stressed out doing this. He loses eight pounds and it was like really causing a strain on his home life. Makes sense. spoil anything but I just are we gonna see a bottle hanging out of the window wow this thing is really not wanting to focus right now I told you guys a long time ago that I found this movie here on YouTube I feel like in Spanish dubbed over and then I was doing an experiment of just taking the audio from the movie and I was gonna try and dub it into this and This was way back in the day on this channel. I remembered that bottle. This guy doesn't want to go. What have you been through? What's he been through? He's a writer. Oh. Is so this guy's gonna go get it. Uh-oh. Yeah, go all the way back into the closet because I'm going to reach out, get this bottle, wrap it up in a towel. Oh, that's his brother. Why? He said leper? This back hides your liquor.
What a fabulous leopard fur coat she's wearing. Oh, who's he? Is he tripping? He's tripping? Where he's trying to stay to go with her? He wants his brother to go with his woman. So he's supposed to be the one that's going with her? He's tripping her. Wow. After what you've been through. Rosa. But he doesn't trust him. So his brother don't be trusting him without being all up on him 24-7? Oh, and that cigarette's about to catch on fire, so he's going to go and see the bottle. I was going to say, does he not say anything? Wow, he's a liar. We're just seeing it's an it's being an addict. Yes, well, okay. Oh, now so now they need to leave him just to prove it. Oh, well, they just dumped it out. Okay, little girl. You're loving him. And he knows that. And he takes advantage of it and try not to love you as I kiss you on the lips. Hmm. Well, he figured out that place. Does this fool have another bottle hidden somewhere? That music. We hear that in Spellbound. Is that the same year? His brother lives with him. He really can't just have a fifth. Wow. Uh, 
so his brother says that he knows there's nothing in here. It's just that this fool drank everything, huh? Not that his brother knew all of these places that he's looking through. Okay, well, that's pretty freaking creepy. Undo the chain for her. I thought is I'd have said full undo this chain for me to come in and get my effing money. That lady works hard for her money. In this day and age, ten dollars. It ain't gonna take him ten dollars to go replace that bottle they dumped out on him. Will it? Okay, he's aiming for a fifth. Maybe it. Yeah. He'd be drinking just the nasty shit that they have at any bar right there. He's not trying to do top shelf. So as far as that, whiskey used to be my drink of choice. I told you guys I don't drink. I did my heyday of partying. But when I was little... <laughs> We started out, I was drinking Canadian Mist Whiskey. <laughs> and over time, I progressed to Jack. Okay, And then that was the only thing I'm trying to drink. But this fool's like, hell no. Give me the Canadian Mist. <laughs> oh, why is he coming into a bar? He... Got change off of getting two fifths. Oh, why would you come in and spend more than you need to to get a shot when you have two fifths? Still got some change. That's what I'm saying. It shouldn't have cost all his money to get. Well, I wouldn't have thought for two fifths, though. So. Oh, that dude just didn't want to see it. So he is a writer. He won't get all deep about it. It's infinite. He's living at six. Oh, a pro's coming up. Oh, he bought some apples, too.
Yeah. Mm hmm You're doing too much. So as long as he doesn't get it cut off, he won't take it. This lady right here is a complete and total pro. Oh, uh, he be um dealing with her on Jane Weinman. Natch. She got a client. Does that he hooks up with her? It's not job to be responsible for that. Is the bar gonna fill up? the time. When I said that about drinking too, I actually never got very good at drinking. There is no way an F that alcohol would make me feel all tuned in like this fool's talking about. You just get wasted, right? Like, I actually hated drinking because you're so out of control of your faculties. Oh. It got late. Oh, he is going to leave without him. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's just out. We're losing him. He's there. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Because he's an addict. How come if she feels that way, they don't have doctors? that are helping them with this because you would hear that language about what it is it's a sickness but that'd be more something that a doctor would say this full i was gonna say the bar fills up has he tried to tell him a couple of times Oh, he was trying to tell this fool he still had some change. Wow. So he sat there and had 15 shots and still had change off of this $10. And he's going with two fifths. He done drank about that much. Oh, and his brother left his house. 
Is that girl there? And he be hollering around on her too, huh? Under the guise of his sickness. Is his brother ever coming back? Does he think? Or, I mean, like, is he that through where he's just like, he's never coming back? Because it seems like they do live together. Huh? Does he live with his brother just so he can be able to be watching him like this all the time? As hard as I because he just breezed past her, now he's gonna come and get all crazy on her. Is he gonna stick it up to the fireplace or something? Wow. Okay. Um. He's going into a vent. Wow, watch out, dude. And he's just gonna look at that. How is does he consider himself drunk? I mean, is he in that place where he gets to? And he wants this the most. He just wants to be left alone with his alcohol. That's true when that dude told Jane Wyman to give herself a chance. To leave this fool alone. <clears throat> I mean, does she consider herself engaged to this fool or... I mean, I don't think I could be connected to some dude doing me like this. Call me, call me, call me. Oh, he got a dollar left. A couple of eggs. Will he do it? Wow. I remember being so sick like that off of alcohol one time. <laughs>
Where's the other one? She's such a hoe, dude. She's a pro, a hoe. Is this the dude? <laughs> oh, I, was, I thought it was the... Oh, he's here for that girl. Oh, he's real lucky. It's an emergency. Mine didn't rupture. It'll make you feel bad before it gets to that place. Um, no. Oh, so she's, she uses discretion. It's just going to get really ready. Hmm. Oh, we got the one in the leopard coat. Hmm. Well, go home. You just remembered that you have your bottles there. Is it like five cents a shot? Okay, was he in this condition back then? His hat does not fit his head properly. This is his own hat or he got handed somebody else's hat. And nobody wore their hats like this back in the day. Well, you should you got the wrong hat. That's the hat that like Cary Grant would have been putting on in the awful truth, right? Like it's not supposed to come down here and it's not supposed to sit on the top of your head like this. <laughs> He had a fifth in his coat pocket, right? Okay, they're drinking. Is he gonna leave? Because he sees them, he needs to go get to his liquor.
He came here by himself. What, does he do this because it gives him hours or whatever that he won't drink, but he wasn't planning on this scene in this play? Oh, wow, well, they are just driving him crazy. People, do you go um, into the opera by yourself? He's here by himself, right? On purpose. There's no shame in it if you do. I mean, it takes guts, right? If anything. I tried to go. Um, I've gone to the movies by myself. That's as far as I can take it. I don't do restaurants. I would never. <laughs> I could never sit in a restaurant um, by myself, but I've, I've never been to the opera either, so it's probably no different than a movie. Oh, wow, he's remembering his coat. He don't be traveling without a pint. But he came here, huh, to try and give himself something to do instead of drink. This was a tactic he was trying to employ. to go some hours. Is he gonna be given the wrong coat? This is your coat. Oh, he's losing his mind. Huh? So he's telling this dude his life story. So three years ago, he was an addict. But, again, did he say why he came here by himself? Like, it was seriously to just try and do something to take his mind off of it. He didn't notice her until right now. Oh, well, don't you want your hat full? Oh, he's going to snatch it from her. Oh. Does he throw it? Ah. Go for him. Um, I'm so bothered by the fit of this hat on his head. It need. I, what is the matter with it? I guess it's fitting better now. Uh, 
Oh, he's not trying to shake her hand. Wow. But he's a writer. She's cute, um, and this coat is a lot. A party. Oh, now he can go to this party. I mean, it's not even a flask. Huh? I mean, a full, like, yeah, why wouldn't you carry a flask? Okay, so he got with her from the very beginning because he was using her. Oh. I mean, the shots have to be a penny a piece, right? Oh, she, she, she got a good job. Hmm. Oh, he's there. Okay, I thought, wait, he don't show up because he's all wasted. He's wearing a different hat now, huh? That hat was not what these hats back in this day are supposed to be looking like. This one looks much better on him. I was just full go to church and he was talking shit to the barkeeper because sometimes he has to go to church. <laughs> Why was she late? Okay, so she doesn't see him. Oh, well, she was working at Time Magazine. 
they kept her late. See, I was gonna say, this girl be working 60, 70 hours a week. How many hours are there in a week if we get 48 of them off? And she was like, I have to work Saturday and Sunday at the magazine after doing 40. Full hideout, though, you know what I mean? Oh, she doesn't come in your way. She got the phone right there at the desk. Duck out, though, full. Like, she's going to turn right over toward you. Is it going to leave right now out of the booth? Wow. Wow. Okay, so he's just roommates with his brother. Well, they say that, like, this thing often, like, runs in the family. They said that he was practicing, like, and filmed a couple of scenes when he actually was drunk, but I guess that didn't work. So I don't think, like, he actually ever is in these scenes, unless they kept some of that footage. Oh, it's her. He knows it's her. Helen knows that he drinks by now, or she doesn't? If he was alright. To get a job. That he's about to become employed. If he had a job. It's his bottle. It's his bottle. Oh, she doesn't. Okay, goodbye, bye, yeah, Helen. Oh,
he has drinks all the time. Tight. So she would know. He's already been into rehab. Oh, okay. Doctor, yeah. A writer, right? Um. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's why he left. His shadow. Oh, that music. Look at his eyes, though. I mean, he does look messed up. But he can't write it. This is good. He's doing a good job. His shadow side. Out of the wet. Yeah, no, okay. He's been all the way into this. If he's been to rehab. So he lives with his brother because his brother pays everything for him with his brother. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. What a mess. Uh, mm -hmm. Run away.
Alright, I mean... Good... I can't even say it. Hmm. He thought it was really a story. It does this whole go do that. The Lost Weekend. Is this, is he really going to write his little story? Okay, so he doesn't really mess with that hoe, the pro, because, oh, like, about right now, he was supposed to be going to pick her up. She said she had to go get a facial, a finger wave, and she was, she didn't have enough for clothes, too, but what she had was going to be good enough. She, that lady don't know where he lives, huh? So, he's a writer that's very, um just concerned with comments basically right like he's if he gets negative comments it's enough to shut him down he's very dependent on feedback he's in that way he's not really a true artist because i would say like a true artist has got to get their own experience out of their creation and if they decide to share it you kind of have to be of a mindset of letting it go, and it was what it was for you. You either were or weren't satisfied with it. But if you were, oh, it's up there full. If you were satisfied with it, you don't give an F whether or not the feedback is good. I mean... Everybody's human. Everybody cares about comments. Feedback. But, I mean, it, like, rules his life. I mean, he's he got to the root of it. He's doing all of this because he has lost his confidence as a writer. He got great feedback in college. He was a little prodigy writer. He was the next Mark Twain Hemingway, right? And so he quit college early to come and try and conquer New York, and they didn't just give him the exact same feedback. And it shook his confidence to where he's overindulging, but it's like he's broken down by what people think. He's going to go back to that place. How is he going to have some money? Why, um, he couldn't go back to that dude's bar? Oh, he's going to dine and dash. <laughs> oh, and now he's going to try and leave. <sighs> this movie is a trip. Oh, well, you're going to get knocked out.
No, this dude, I mean, as an addict, he's just, it's like one aspect of his problems. Because it is, it's like full, he, his brother does need to kick his ass out. So that, you know what, full, you gotta come up with rent, okay? And if you wanna eat, you gotta, you have to take care of your effing self as an adult, dude. This fool gets away with this shit because he don't have to pay rent. He don't have to. He gets 50 cents a week for cigarettes, an allowance. Oh, he got this chick's purse right here. Sweet brother man. He's just a thief at heart, dude. He's a bad person. Okay, he paid for it. He's got this chick's wallet or purse still. Or he left it in the bathroom. Did he leave it in the bathroom? To get my brother in trouble? Does he have it or he left it in the fucking bathroom? Okay. Oh, they're gonna. you are. You know what I mean? Like, there gets into being all of this shit. Oh, I did all of this because I was doing this and that substance. But it's like, at some point, it's like your character is coming through with this shit, too. Because, oh, he paid five cents for the carnation, but he sure was gonna steal that bitch's money if he just wouldn't have got caught. You know, he'd have been able to get about 15 more drinks, too. I'm saying it's like his mentality that because he is not getting the feedback that he wants on his writing, oh, he won't do anything else though. He won't become a real estate salesman or an accountant. Is he going to start this house on fire? What the F is this lamp over with all these papers around it for? That's when he was tearing everything up in here. His brother left, but this is his brother's apartment, so yes, his brother will be back at some point. I'm judging. I mean, I'm not liking a lot about this dude. He's a man hoe. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, oh, he just has not ever really done anything with that girl. But what he was doing with her anyway was okay on Helen. Got some little sense of entitlement that if he can't do what he wants as a writer, he doesn't have to do anything. He just gets to live rent free. Needing to have any kind of money for food free. I'm not bonding with this dude, do you know what I mean? Okay, now he's got to freak out because he's not going to be able to tell if it's dawn or dusk. And what day is it, too, because the bars are going to be closed, right? He drank the whole bottle. Yeah, 
Has he? He hasn't seen Helen this weekend yet. Is it his brother? His parents know that he's in this shape, that he lives completely on his brother and went to rehab and it didn't take. Do his parents expect his brother to have to be doing all of this shit for him? Completely taking care of him? Is he going to take it off the hook as soon as she stops? drink at all. It'll be Sunday and everything's closed up. I mean, he'd be taking these fifths to the head. Oh, no, he does use that glass. Okay. But he went like this, huh? He's going to go pawn. Is the typewriter his? It, like it matters. He's not eating. He's not taking in the milk. Here's these camera angles, right? That thing that was about. Well, something else looks like it's closed, so. Yeah, it's weird. Why are they all closed? Now he's just going to be trying to take his typewriter into the grocery store and <laughs> get some money for it. He's going to try and go anywhere that's open. He's going to try and go to the bar. He's going back over to this man's bar, right? This is the cameras you can see. Oh, he's gone more than a block, huh? He said it was a block and a half and he wouldn't make it. Is this walking anything off for him? Why is everything closed? Yeah, this uh, little instrument is heavily being relied upon. Maybe slightly overdone, right? <laughs> it's like... Is he about to freak out? Like, why is everything closed? Yeah. It's 
St. Patrick's Day. Okay, dude. We're just seeing the time for... Because it's hours later. Oh yeah, who's gonna try and come in here? I'll give you this typewriter. Oh, he will give him one. Yeah, so when's not enough? It's like it didn't do anything for him. Did it it didn't reset anything for him. It's not like okay, he's back to good. Does she have alcohol? Because he knows she's a pro. He just thinks she's... He totally knows this is that girl's house because of that little statue. She's going to be pissed off at him, huh? Well, yeah, she said the second floor, huh? On Jane Wyman. Okay, what about this child right now? Is somebody here for him now? His emergency contact? 
Because more than that fall, this is what was the matter with him. Why do you want to know? Well, I'm just going to let him go. So they said that this is really inside of Bellevue. Um, Jackie Gleason is always talking about Bellevue. Oh, he can't really. What folks? He does he have folks like parents? Okay, well, well, you probably shouldn't have your job. I mean, you can't be talking shit like this, doing this job. It's gonna knock him out. Things crawling on you. Okay, so, wow, again, they were granted permission to be filming literally, really, inside of Bellevue's detox wing ward. And to rehearse for this, he really came in to try and spend the night, and he was so disturbed that at 3 o'clock in the morning, he walked out.
I don't know why I said crawling all over. It probably just made sense. Um, because I don't remember so far. I remembered a little bit of them meeting each other at the opera. Just the part where they met. I didn't remember him sitting in the opera house. Restraints, dumb. Oh, he's going to sneak out now. He's going to be the doctor. Why is he looking at that coat? He's going to get the doctor's coat and sneak out as the doctor. It's just an, like an overcoat. It's just any, it could be anybody's coat. This will be getting away with sneaking by people too much in this movie. The way he walked out of the phone, like he waited until Helen and the mom and dad were looking at him like this. And then he came out of the phone booth to walk by them. <laughs> the way he just. <laughs> came by that officer um like his back was barely to him i was gonna say maybe you should take off the pants but that would look really crazy okay he got out to do what fool like what is he trying to do go home or is this rock bottom for him now is something going to register for him? And now today is Sunday to him. Um, I was gonna say, he's like waiting, he's, he's hiding in plain sight. Oh, that's her. Oh, she gonna come and look. Is she? Keep coming, she's gonna keep coming. Mm-hmm. Uh. 
Are we almost? I'm wondering, like, wrapping up here. I mean, how much more needs to happen to this guy? Is he gonna get hit by a car or something? Is this his apartment? Or is it a church? I thought it would be Sunday. Just the day before it was Saturday, right? Did he lose all day Sunday in the detox? Oh. Does he have a gun? Like, why is this dude just gonna get it for him? Because he said it all stupid like that. I told you guys, I wasn't, like, ever really wanting to watch this movie. I, I'm kind of really surprised this wins Best Picture. For 45, there was a lot of good stuff that year. Oh, good gosh. I'm over it, right? Is his brother coming back? I, this is, again, his brother's apartment. He's got a lease. Okay, I really don't need to see a rat right now. Because something more drastic is going to happen, right? Because he's hallucinating. Okay, that's pretty evil. Ew. It's going to, like, eat that thing, huh? Hold on, I'm not, I'm not even doing this, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm hearing, okay, there's an attack happening, right? She was calling the police, screaming his head off. She don't need to be the one going up in that.
he's just going to try and put the chain on. If he puts the chain on, they can't come in. This self-destructive behavior, I mean, I like in this day and age, rehab, I think what everybody knows, like, and just, it's not going to take until the person themselves is ready for it, and, you know, it's just, it's self-destructive. At a certain point, it really is that... Alone. Has she ever seen him this bad? You need a bath. Brush your teeth, shave. The bat ate the mouse. I wasn't gonna watch that shit. Oh yeah, he's giving best actor, that's for sure. But all of the theme of this movie, I mean... The guy jumps off the building. Or yes. Or like that. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for all of this shit to stop now, dude. Like I'm I was over this a really long time ago. Okay, so he's shaved, she's bathed him and shit and shaved him. I'm over it. Robin her. Oh, he's trying to, um, pawn her stuff? Yeah, of course, right? Like, he ain't going into the liquor store with her coat. She just wants her coat back, dude. That coat's very special to her, obviously. It's um, very unique.
who was he writing this letter to? A coat. Oh yeah, no, she doesn't want your black derby. Girl, if you're looking for this thing, you gotta move, I would say. She's gonna have one with him. Oh, his brother's name is Wick. That's who the letter was to. Uh, he doesn't have ambition. Mm-hmm. 
his typewriter. That's the miracle. Right on time. Well, you have done all of the research. But that last movie that we just watched, it was like, there's something about this environment that creates an autobiographical impulse. Um, It was on your bottle hanging out the window. By a string. Like and subscribe. Uh, we'll see you soon. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.